Hello, friends. Welcome to another, ep well, okay, the first episode, if we're calling it that, Weird Stuff Exhibition. Things I found at the thrift store. Let's begin. Our next odd thing is this, an HDMI splitter. One HDMI to two HDMIs. Okay, well, what's special about that? Why is it so unusual? Well, uh, it's huge. It's huge and incredibly heavy. This is the one that I already had, which as you can see is about a third or the quarter of the size. So why? Very good question. Let me open this up and see what it is. This, I'm quite positive, is just a single chip, off the shelf, nothing special, uh, single purpose device with no other role in the world. And all they did is put the chip on a board and wire the two outputs and the one input to it and Bob's your uncle. You may notice it's plugged in. Why did I do that for a preview? Because I have super glued the cable into it. Because uh, the connector was bad and replacing it wasn't worth it. Super glued did the job. So let's just open this up and see what its deal is. Looks like one screw here. Eh. No, 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 the feet, I think. Yeah, no, no, no the feet. Okay, so just uh, that guy. Probably let me get it open and get a look at it. Eh. 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 Okay, well, it doesn't. All right, so obviously the next likely suspects are these guys on the sides. It's still not opening. Eh, the back. Oh, I can feel that coming apart. Ooh. Huh. 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 What the hell? Okay. That's... That's a doozy. This used to be something else. Gravis, what the hell are you going on about? Here, let me show you. This did not spend its entire life as an HDMI splitter. I'm quite positive of that. There's too much going on. So first, uh, two major ICs, which I will look up. A um, couple of minor ICs with a fairly high pin count. Interesting, but what's far more interesting to me is what's missing. What were these? What were these? Why are there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven LEDs, none of which are visible from the outside? Why is there room for what I suspect was another voltage regulator? What were these? What's this for? And what are these for? This could have been something else, or it was something else. And then the company decided to make it into an HDMI splitter. There's even a button. Why is there a button? Yeah, this is, um, there's a lot going on here. All right, so... What do we have to begin with? Um, this guy here is an EP9132. I can't make out that name. I'll Google it. This guy here is definitely an HDMI splitter chip. HDMI 1.3, uh, released in 2007, revised 2008, which was the year this thing was released. So at least it's a brand new HDMI splitter. The other one, EPFQ11A. Sorry, it's an EPF011A. I was wrong. Uh, that is a generic microcontroller, uh, quote unquote, per the data sheet, generic MCU uh, with 64K embedded flash. Now, you don't need that for an HDMI splitter. So obviously it would have been doing whatever all of this was. Additionally, this is an LV4052, and that is a hmm, multiplexer. So. Not terribly interesting, that one. I can't make out the number on the other one. So that didn't tell us anything. That didn't tell us anything. That didn't tell us anything. Um, these? What's JR in schematic terminology? Seems like JR is just a generic term for a connector in schematic terminology, so doesn't tell us much. We don't know what these would have been. Man, not much to go on here. Well, that didn't explain anything. Crap. Let me take it out, see if there's anything on the other side of the board. 
Nothing. There are no answers to be found here. All right, well, we do have one remaining technique for learning something about this, and that's to turn it on and see what it does. So let's get to it. I have a 12 volt power supply handy. So let's just go ahead and wang that in there. I uh, see the connector is either broken or this connector doesn't quite fit. I think it's the latter. I think this connector is too big. I'm gonna turn the lights off so you can see a little better. I'm thinking this is just a reset, honestly. So maybe this is just all diagnostics. Maybe in 2008, HDMI splitter was just not a finished product. I mean, this is a lot older than I thought it was. So maybe most of this crap is just diagnostic test points and stuff. I don't know. Well, let's put a signal into it and see what the lights do. And I know that's a good signal, but the lights don't seem to do anything. Let's hook up the output. All right, I've just hooked up an output that is successfully receiving the signal, and now we see the first light here is on, the first light there is on. I'm going to hit this button. Yeah, those are all just diagnostic lights, because now it's back on and working again. So the only explanation is that this is simply a diagnostic unit. They must have built it and just sold their test board. Weird. It makes no sense that all these would make their way into finished products. I mean, this is so many extra components. That, 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 all those, these. Now, of course, there's another option, which is that maybe there was a higher end version of this and that somehow some of this had something to do with that. But that doesn't make a lot of sense because exposing these lights to a customer wouldn't, wouldn't really accomplish much. And there's no reason to put lights in every single one of these to sell to a consumer. And certainly not the, the little reset button that would never be of use to them. I mean, there's no, no point in that at all. This thing makes no sense to me. Not a lick. Well, um, hey, if it works, I don't give a shit. But what a strange gadget. I purchased this purely out of spite. I'm not even going to lie. I bought this because I wanted to be bad-natured about it. And I think you will not be surprised why I wanted to do that. So this is... <laughs> This is a speed if switcher. This switch is optical, right? So you got three, well, it's not really outputs or inputs, you know, it's bi-directional, but anyway, uh, you got three inputs or outputs and then a common, right? So you do like that, you switch it back and forth. Now, how does that work? Does it have a optical transceiver in there? Well, no, it's not powered can't just be electrical contacts because it's uh you know it's, it's fiber and why you gotta do this okay well <laughs> well well let me open it and show you this is one of the most infuriating devices i have ever found at the junk store particularly because i was going to ignore it until a random customer who i do not know who was scrounging the bin next to me picked it up and told me how it worked. And I was so flabbergasted. I was so aghast. I was so upset. I bought it on the spot. Just so I could bring it home and show it to you. And also because it had been in that store for like three years and no one was going to buy it. I don't even know how much it was. It was probably a dollar. Yep. When you press this, it unplugs the fiber. <laughs> it plugs it in over there. See? Whoop. There you go. I don't know. This seems like a very bad idea. <laughs> it works, right? Right? If I had a speed of transceiver to plug in here, I would demonstrate how the light moves, but you you already know what's going on. This is the uh this is the silliest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> this piece of crap back together. All right, next up I have this cute little joystick. So what is interesting about this thing? Well, it's old. Um, I don't have a date. Doesn't seem to be dated on the back. Made by CH Products. They made a lot of flight sticks. I'm not sure if they're still around. It feels, it, honestly, it feels pretty good. You know, it's it's got that, you know, exposed mechanism sort of feel to it where it's very, hits the ends of its stops real easily. But, um, 
build quality wise feels good. It needs a little bit of retro bright, but you know, who cares? Uh, and um, the buttons are actually really solid. And it just you notice it doesn't make doesn't make those crinkly noises, right? Doesn't make those awful noises. But the thing that really tickled me pink about it, you know, it's IBM compatible, so that was that was a big reason we wanted it. But uh, the thing that really tickled me pink about it was I noticed these standard slide switches. Um, but when you go to slide them, they won't slide. They won't go. But turns out, you gotta push in on them. And then they stay stuck down. You know why? Because that's your non-return to zero control. And you can do it on both axes. So now it's completely floppy. It goes wherever you put it. And then if you switch that back, see it stays stuck? until you get it centered again. That's actually really cute. <laughs> I've seen several approaches to doing these, but none as pleasant as those. So I guess my better judgment, perhaps, uh, I'd like to open this up real quick and just take a look at the mechanism. Hopefully I don't break it beyond repair in the process. You can see it was $3, so I wouldn't be out that much, but it was one of those things where I wouldn't have bought it if I had to spend any money on it. And I'd rather not stop having it just because I was curious what was going on inside. I like that those screws are so long. Unironically, ooh, I can feel a little bit of spring. Okay, not bad, not bad. This is a pretty basic, straightforward design. Works just like the one I took apart in one of my first videos. See, there's your trim control that actually tilts the potentiometer mount back and forth. That's straightforward. So the only difference is in the way that those non-return to zero controls work. So I'm just going to pop that out. Eh, eh, the mechanism for that's buried. So I don't get to see it. Oh well. Alright friends, that's all I have. Thank you for joining me. Have a nice day.